Good evening. Welcome to the July 2021 edition of the Conway Planning Commission meeting. Uh, I'm Arthur Ingram. We're going to do a quick roll call. Brandon Rule. I'm here. Ann Tucker. Here. Rebecca Fincher. Here. Drew Gaynor. Letitia Sanders Jones. Here. Laura King. Here. Brian Townsend. Larry Webb. Present. Ray Williams. Present. All right, we have a quorum present. <clears throat> um, the Conway Planning Commission makes recommendations to the City Council on public hearing items. Items reviewed on this agenda will be considered by the City Council as early as July 27, 2021. Items not approved by the Planning Commission may be appealed to the City Council within 30 days of the date of the Planning Commission denial. With the exception of decisions made by the Planning Commission acting as the Board of Zoning Adjustment. With that being read, the first thing on our agenda tonight is the approval of minutes from our June meeting. Motion to approve. Second. All right, there was a motion and it was seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes unanimously. The next thing on our agenda is the subdivision review which is a request for preliminary plat approval of Ivy Plain subdivision phase two. Staff. Yes. Thank you. Item 1A is a request for a subdivision approval for a 47 lot subdivision located at approximately 175 feet west of the intersection of Wilmington Drive and Norbert Circle. The development represents phase two of the Ivy Place subdivision. The property is zoned R1 single family residential. The proposed lots range from 9,500 square feet to approximately 40,000 square feet, uh, which is consistent with the lot requirements of the site's zoning classification. The subdivision will take access by the extension of Wilmington Drive, Ivy Place Drive, and Medlock Lane. All proposed streets will require five foot sidewalks and a six and a half foot green space. Staff notes that no waivers were included in this request. Staff recommends approval of the preliminary plat contingent upon the completion of the amended punch list and the associated conditions of, appro of approval as proposed lot sizes and frontage widths are consistent with the requirements of the R1 zoning for this site. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Levi. Is the applicant on hand and want to speak in favor? You can, the applicant. Oh, you don't have to. If, if you don't have anything, you don't have to, that's fine. All right, good deal, thank you. Bringing this back into committee, are there any? We don't do that for some reason. No, this is not. Oh. Sorry. Um, back into commission. Any questions or comments for uh, either Levi or the applicant? If not, I will entertain a motion to on this um, request. I'll make a motion that we approve the. Uh, plat approval for Ivy Place subdivision phase two with the uh, conditions that are listed. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Okay, now we're down to the public hearing section of our agenda. Um, the first and only item here is a request to rezone 14.18 acres along Bill Bell Lane from A1 to MF1. And we have Levi again for the staff. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, item 2A, uh, the applicant is requesting to rezone approximately 14 acres from A1 agricultural to MF1 multifamily residential. The request is split between two properties uh, including an 8.69 acre portion of property located on the east side of Bill, Lan Bill Bell Lane, uh, while a separate non-contiguous portion of the property uh, totaling 5.49 acres uh, is located on the west side of Bill Bell Lane, south of Acuff Lane. Uh, staff notes that that 5.49 acre portion of property features some, uh, some topographical constraints while the eight acre portion is relatively flat. Uh, the surrounding area is predominantly developed as single-family residential uh, and or rural slash undeveloped land. No multifamily zoning currently exists in the area. 
the comprehensive plan designates this area as single family, uh, which would not be consistent with the requested multifamily zoning. However, given the increase in development pressure in the area, uh, some level of flexibility may be appropriate in this context. While a portion of the property may be appropriate for moderately increased density uh, due to those physical constraints, a rezoning to multifamily for the entire property uh, would be inappropriate. Staff recommends denial of the rezoning as requested as it would allow an inappropriate use of the property in context to the surrounding area and could possibly uh, impact adjacent properties. Uh, however, if the Commission wishes to consider lesser zoning districts, uh, staff feels that lower density residential districts could be appropriate given the surrounding development and zoning districts in the area. Uh, alternative zoning districts in the form of R2 and R1 have been identified in the report as potentially appropriate given the context if your commission uh, wishes to consider uh, an amended request. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Is the applicant on hand and have a desire to speak in favor of this? Okay. Frank Shaw, 1315 Main Street, Conway. I'm the owner and developer, and um, we're, uh, we have rezoned a portion of this parcel that we bought from the Bell Estate um, recently. It's about 57 acres, and we rezoned uh, about um, 20, more than 20 acres to R1, and we've begun development on that, as some of your photos show. And we will begin development across the road on the east side on the other R1 area which would be the northeast corner of this particular parcel. And actually the north end line would be consistent with Favre Lane where it extended. That's how far north it goes. So uh, I am uh, the developer of the lots, and um, but I'm not the builder of the houses. And I am the seller of the proposed MF1 zone, but I'm not the developer of that, just so everybody will know those are my customers and clients. So I'm here asking for MF1 because that's a low-density multifamily. I've read the staff report, and I see some merit in some of the things that uh, have been put in there, and I appreciate your input on that, Levi and James. So um, a general discussion might be what we need to do. The issue as I see it, and the reason we asked for MF1, is that the eastern part of this property backs up to an abandoned sewer plant. And we all know that, right? Is there any dispute about that? Conway Corp or the city owns it. On due east of the abandoned sewer plant, which may become a pole yard for the Conway Corp. In fact, it is now. It's a commercial area. Due east of it is heavy industrial. It's called Verco. Due east of that is Sturgis Road and the new laminated uh, uh, bean plant that is supplying beans and so forth to Walmart. So generally, it's been my history, uh, the history that I've learned about zoning, is you don't go from heavy industrial to R1. You go, you have a transitional phase. And that is exactly why we asked for this to be MF1, because it backs up the whole, if you, if, if you could put the plat up, the whole western, um, sorry, the eastern boundary of our property is the western boundary of the Conway Court property, and it's a, it, it is a sewer transmission plant still today with sewer tanks and sewer ponds. And you all know that if you've been by them. I suppose most everybody's here about this because they didn't leave after the other one, the other presentation. So we think that's highly uh, appropriate to have a transitional phase between there and R1. Now keep in mind that for a large portion of this um, boundary between us and Conway Corp's sewer plant, former sewer plant, we have put R1 in there and it's already zoned and and uh, some of it is under construction even to run transmission lines for our sewer to their sewer from the phase we're working on uh, in Bell Valley that's off Acuff Lane. So it, 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 it confuses me why we talk about transitional area in zoning, and then when it comes time to do it, um, not only the staff, but I guess everybody here, objects to us putting duplexes next to a, a Conway Court plant that still has the sewer tanks on it, still has the sewer ponds on it, that used to be the sewer transmission plant, probably a sewer treatment plant, when most of my fine friends and neighbors built there. So having said that, we think our request is entirely reasonable. 
Uh, we asked for R2 on both parcels. The developer, who I'm not going to name him, but he already has other projects in Conway that have been approved, not only by, um, by the city council, but by you. And he's going to build a quality, genuinely, generally, at least all the pictures I have are two-story, sometimes cottage, sometimes salt box, but a different style house. They're not shotgun duplexes. These are two-story apartments, duplexes, that would um, probably be over 3,000 square foot in their footprint on the ground and then divide it by two. Three bedrooms, two, two and a half baths. These are very nice properties. I wish that I had a, um, a diagram to show you of what he's going to develop, but last week our surveyor engineer was on vacation, as was my client. And that would be the honest truth to that. I wish I had it. So what you can see here um, on the pictures that have been, pub have been published up, the people across from ACUF, now I can't speak for all 10 of those homes, but at least two of them and perhaps three, have come and thanked us for clearing the trees because of the transients who lived in those woods. I know that for a fact because I walked up on one the day before I bought it. And that's just unfortunate that we have homeless people living in Conway in these places, but that is in fact what was there. I suspect, and I would guess, that some of, the, some of our audience here today, and thank you for coming, are in attendance to oppose the zoning and others to complain about the tree cutting. So I would like to discuss all of that with everybody here, and I'll remain open to any question that you have. Having said that, I find some, some, I find some merit in the staff recommendations, and if the commission would consider lesser zoning districts um, lower than MF1, uh, we would consider R2, absolutely. In fact, I will tell you that on the Western piece, I will amend that at this time to R2. I believe I can do that if it goes uh, more strict from less strict. Is, am I in, on good sound territory there, James? And as far as the Eastern portion, I'd like to discuss it a little bit further before I make uh, uh, an amendment to our petition at this time, if I can do that. I don't know if you're gonna let us open up the floor to discussion with them or me or not, but I'm okay with that. Okay. Are there any questions for? And I'd love to discuss why we have to remove the trees. I'd love to tell you. Okay, I'll do it right now, I'm ready. Okay, so you might be familiar with a project that I'm doing on Round Mountain, it's called Orchard Hill. We've done two phases, starting the third now. And those are large lots, they're expensive, and they have lots and lots of trees on them. We've cleared the trees we had to, and then we have left a lot of heavy hardwoods and some pine in those areas. But those lots are from 150 by 250, that's almost, it's about eight tenths of an acre, up to three and four and five acre tracks. When you have a large tract, you can leave a few trees, when you leave a lot of trees. But by the time the homeowner there puts their their driveway and their house footprint down, there's still a few trees, but there's not as many as, as you would think. You have to take a lot out. But in this zoning, because of the cost of land, which is, you know, in Conway, it's pretty high, right? Everything sells quick. You have to buy it if you want it. And the cost of construction, everybody knows lumber's up. The cost of pipe, steel, plastic, labor, if you can find it, and air, concrete and everything else that goes into a house. We have found a need in Conway, that is I have, other people have done it, but I have recently, found a need for affordable housing. And if you go on the east side at Matthews Meadows and Museum Meadows, you will see um, almost 200 already construct, well-constructed beginner homes that have all brick, nice pitch on the roof, nice shingles, and they sell for around 190 to 240 And they're selling them faster than they can get lumber to build them. So it was my idea that West Conway or South Conway could use some affordable housing as well. And that's one of the reasons that I bought this. So when you're going to a 60, and I'm talking about the property we have already cut most of the trees about because I think that's an issue. 
When you go to a 60 foot by 100 foot lot, which is what the city requires, in order to be affordable, uh, everybody would like to live on a five acre estate or a two acre estate and pay a hundred to three hundred thousand dollars for the property. We're talking about lots at forty thousand or less. To be affordable, you have to do that. So to get those lots um, at that price, with the price of land, um, the outrageous cost of utility installation in Conway, particularly, then these are the issues that you run into on a six thousand square foot lot. Now I said six thousand square feet. That's sixty by hundred. First, you have the water main. Then you have the sewer main, then you have the electric conduit, then you have the water service line from the meter to the house, then you have the sewer service line from the sewer main to the house, then you have the electric service line from the box to the house, underground utilities. Now all of these are underground. Then you have the storm drains, which are required if you have curb and gutter. You have, you know, you have a three foot setback from the curb to begin your sidewalk, which is five feet wide, that's eight feet across the front of the lot. Some of that is right of way, but nevertheless, it's a mobile area. Then you have a 25 foot setback in the front, a 20 foot setback in the back. Then you have the driveway, concrete driveway. You've got to excavate for it a little bit. And let's say it's 20 feet wide and 20 feet long. That's 400 square feet, just an estimate. Let's say your house is 2,000 square feet. You've got a garage that's about 20 by 20. That's 400 square feet. Then you might have a porch on the front or a porch on the front and the back. Then if you put a fence, you can't have a tree where the fence goes. And it's usually all the way around the house or perimeter. So in, in the developer scheme that we're working with, you don't put trees between the house. You've got a six-foot setback and a six-foot setback. They don't want houses, uh, trees between their houses because, one, it may crack the slab of the roots or it's just in the way can't do it can't put a fence up so when you get to that point you take all those numbers off 6,000 square feet the only way you could leave a really nice tree in somebody's backyard is to one is lay the house out before you clear the timber there's not a builder I know that does it that way not in the world I don't know anybody that lays the house out because you get the lot cleared you look at the lot you see the slope you might want the driveway on this side, but you might reverse the plan and flip it and put it over here. So where you left the tree, it's got to go. You know the cost of removing a tree once it's uh, the house is built? Probably $1,500, $2,000 of a tree. You can't do that. You just can't do it. You can't guess where it goes. Now, if you get past all of those obstacles right there, right there, you get past all of that and you say, well, we can still do it. Then you have the elevation issue. So where we're clearing on ACUF and Bill Bell, there is not one square foot of dirt that we have not had to put a bulldozer, a track hoe, two, or a skid steer to either raise the level of the lot per engineering requirements or to lower the lot. In some places, there's a couple of pretty good ditches through there. We've had to reroute the ditch. So there's lots of pipe there. Well, that pipe is expensive and that's what we do. It's okay. But instead of it running you know, laterally or trying, or I guess you call it diagonally across the lot, you have to turn it, move it, redig it, and put it down lot lines and in drainage easements. And all this is engineered by our engineers, then approved by the city planning, then approved by the Conway Corp on utilities, and it's all engineered. So if you just had a perfectly flat piece of property, you'd have all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You'd have all the thirteen issues I mentioned regardless but if it's not flat and level and none of them are then you still have to account for your engineering and your elevation levels so if you're building big beautiful lots that sell for a hundred or two hundred thousand you can leave a scattering of trees if you're building low-cost housing which Conway is just eating up and I can tell you if you've been out east of town where we've developed we cut a forest out there there was not one complaint we had to to build the houses. We've done it twice. But we come to West Conway and we get these complaints and we're doing exactly the same project we did over there. So I wonder if it's um, the trees or the location or the people's feelings or what it is. So I want everyone here to know I love trees. 
That's why I bought the property I bought on Round Mountain. We bought a good bit. We're going to preserve all the trees and make it a beautiful tree-covered neighborhood. But on lots that size, they start at over 100000 and you can't do that in affordable housing. So if you want affordable housing in Conway, you have to do it this way. I don't think there's any other way to do it. I'm not speaking for any other developers here in Conway or in the room or outside the room or anywhere. But you have to do it that way or we wouldn't do it. We all love trees. We all love trees. I love trees. But to develop it, you have to clear it. So well, let me make one more point and I'll sit down. Of all the nice people that are here, I bet your lot was cleared. I bet downtown Conway was cleared. I bet the streets were cleared because this was all wooded. This was all woods between the Arkansas River Valley. Trees grew big and tall here and thick. And everywhere you see a building, a store, a street, or a highway, or an alley, somebody cut a tree. So this is just how we have to do it. And it's unfortunate, but it's also convenient that once people get settled, they don't want anybody else to cut any trees. And I respect that. So in the areas we can leave them, we've left lots of them. And I would encourage you to go look. If you haven't, go look. It's only about five miles or four from this location. So if you look at that math, you can see where the trees are. Look at the uh, Conway Court property with the sewer tanks on it and Verco. I just suspect it was as wooded as what we have years ago. I would look to the back to the west over on Greenwood, Berry Vine, Appalachian, Southern Hills, Stanley Russ, Wasson Road, Mary Allen Drive, and I would have you look at that picture and you can see where the trees are. Well, the trees are on the slope of the hill, except for us, we're in the valley. Most every tree you can see, or the big stands of them, are on the crest of that ridge or just off the edge where people have cut the tree so they'll have a view. Just look at the map and you'll see the answer. To the south of it on Stanley Russ Road and to the east of Wasson Road, that was just as wooded as where we are. But yet people complain about us cutting trees, but theirs are already cut. That's where I'm at on it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Are there any questions for... Uh, <clears throat> if there are no questions for Mr. Shaw, we're going to open... I'm going to let Mr. James take and read the opposition letters we've already received. Yes, yeah, so what we'll do uh, <clears throat> from here is I'll go ahead and we have had comments that have been submitted to us electronically. I'll go ahead and read those into the record. Uh, and then following, we'll hear uh, public comment uh, from the, the public. Generally speaking, with that, we want everybody to be to be heard. Uh, that said, if if you have are here with a group, um, we would appreciate uh, if you all have the same comment to make to, to sort of designate a group leader to, to sort of convey those comments uh, for the <laughs> for the benefit of everyone. Once we hear one comment, we've and it's it's been repetitious. Sometimes it, it we we understand what the, what the comment is. Um, so I will I will start with the first comment here. Uh, this following co public comment was received via email 7-16-2021. Hello, planning and development. It totally breaks my heart to see the clearing of every tree, some of them decades old, on lots in our city. I am aware of the inevitability of development, but I am asking that you please act quickly to balance respect for our community's very sacred resources ecosystem and our progress in development. I am writing out of concern for rezoning application REZ 0621-0062 and for the clear cutting that is taking place in South Conway due to recent subdivision development. I doubt that you'll be reading past this part of my email, but there are so many reasons, both physically and psychological reasons, that we need trees. Here are but a few. Uh, trees help cool neighborhoods and decrease residential energy use. Trees properly priced, placed around buildings can reduce air conditioning needs by 30% and can save 20 to 50% in energy use for heating, USDA Forest Service. Clear cutting cuts down most of the big trees, which are even more valuable than we think. A study published in Nature has found that big trees continue to grow faster and take more carbon out of the atmosphere as they get older and bigger. It will take at least 10 to 15 years for any newly planted trees to offer the same economic and energy benefits 
as the tree is being cut. Uh, mature trees increase property values, provide privacy, and, other, and offer a noise buffer between homes, neighborhoods, and roads. Having large trees in yards along streets increase a home's value, increases a home's value from 3 to 15 percent. Clear cutting leaves bare soil that can erode during heavy rains. Erosion contributes to Conway's flooding problems, including in the Stone Down Creek area in South Conway. The mature trees being cut down provide vital habitat for wildlife. Wildlife either dies or has to migrate to new areas, but as more, more and more land is developed, there are fewer and fewer places for them to go. Conway is a tree city and must abide by Tree City USA standards, yet the newest subdivisions in Conway are often treeless due to clear cuts. Preserving trees can stimulate economic uh, development and attract residents. Apartments and developments with trees rent sell more quickly and residents stay longer. Space in a wooded setting is more valuable to sell or rent. Clear cutting for subdivision makes our roads and neighborhoods less pleasant places to be around. Maintaining mature trees is one of the most cost-effective ways to address climate change. Studies have found that forest bathing, uh, Shinrin-yoku, has positive physiological effects such as uh, blood pressure reduction, improvement of autonomic and immune functions, as well as psychological effects of alleviating depression and improving mental health. Uh, there is the link below it uh, from that article. Individuals living and interacting in green spaces, GS, report being more energetic and good overall health and have more, have more of a sense of meaningful purpose in life. Uh, another study shows that. Uh, current scientific findings are illuminating what humans intuitively know. Nature has great benefits for the human brain, and this is shown through increased happiness, health, well-being, and cognition. Historically speaking, Cyrus the Great intuitively built lush green gardens in the crowded urban capital of Persia 2,500 years ago to increase human health um, and promote a sense of calm in a busy city. The 16th century Swiss-German physician uh, Paracelsus declared, the art of healing comes from nature, not the physician. These insights have led SY researchers, uh, that's uh, Shin and that previous word that I, I mentioned. Um, researchers to investigate the modern health benefits of human beings being exposed to nature or green spaces. I couldn't find where it was. Uh, Shinrin Ryoku, that's what it is. Uh, research has been conducted with uh, physiological measurements and psychological surveys before and after forest bathing. The evaluation indices measured were systolic blood pressure, SBP, diastolic blood pressure, pulse rate, uh, autonomic functions, and profile for mood states, POMS. There are therapeutic effects on, one, the immune system function, increase in natural killer, natural killer cells, cancer prevention, cardiovascular system, hypertension, coronary artery disease, the respiratory system, allergies, and respiratory disease, depression and anxiety, mood disorders and stress, mental relaxation, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and humans, humans feeling human feelings of awe, increase in gratitude and, and selflessness. As a resident of Conway, I urge you to require REZ 0621-0062 and any additional developments to salvage mature trees that will end up in backyards and maintain a barrier of mature trees between roadways and developments. Sincerely, Christine Wilson, Red Haven, Conway, Arkansas. I agree with that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, James, it may be good. Everybody may know this, but these were sent to us beforehand. They the, were. They the public were... comments. So just this is not the first time. I mean, we just so everybody knows. Yeah. Yes. In our, in our general practice coming out of out of COVID, we've had a general practice of of reading these in meetings. This will be the last time that we we do that uh, because we are we are in person. But it wasn't clear to the app, uh, to the to public at that time. So we were making that uh, a new thing. Um, the following comment, public comment was received uh, via email 716-2021. All, I am Sherry Smith and live at the intersection of Stanley Russ Road and Daniel Lane. Due south of Frank Shaw's proposed rezoning of several acres of property to MF1 along Bill Bell Lane and South German Road. This does not seem an appropriate zoning in what is currently all single family. There is no precedent for the zoning in this area. In addition, the additional traffic created by this zoning would place an undue burden on the current road system. Please consider rec recommending against this request for the sake of the citizens that have already invested in single-family homes. Rezoning to MF1 would affect both our property values and our quality of life. Uh, 
Thank you for your consideration, Sherry Smith. Um, this is to Mr. Brandon Rule, and re I am the receipt of reviewing the developer's application for rezoning rest to two lots on both sides of Bill Bell Lane. 5.49 acres lot and 8.9 acres lot are currently zoned A1 Agricultural District. Com comprehensive plan on the City of Conway, revised 2018, indicates those lots are planned for R1, one family residential district. The applicant requested for rezoning those lots to MF1 multifamily district. Only site survey drawing, legal description on two lots, and aerial photography are enclosed in the developer's application form for my review. Uh, after reviewing the developer's application, I am not able to determine what the plan for those lots is going to be. Uh, the new development could bring in more traffic, increase noise, increase light pollution, and water pollution. As a result, those will decrease the property value surrounding those lots. Uh, without an environment impact study report, site planning showing multifamily dwellings, parking lots, and surrounding elements, I vote not to approve uh, for rezone those lots to MF1. Sincerely, Robert L. Harzog, a family member of Elwood Smith and Mary Elise Hurst, 1222 Stanley Russ Road, Conway, Arkansas, 72032. Uh, the next are a batch of, of letters that uh, are all uh, identical. It says Conway, City of Conway Planning Commission and City of Conway Council. I want to express my concerns on the property located at Bell Circle. I'm against adding apartments and any multifamily units. This area is zoned a single family residential area and believe it should stay that way. There are many more better alternatives for such housing. Please vote against this rezoning this area. Thank you for your time. Uh, this is signed by Alex Kordsmeyer, 11 Mary Ellen Drive, Conway, Arkansas, 72034, I think. Um, Paula Pruitt, 1045 Summerwood Drive. Danny Kordsmeyer, 1895 Daniel Lane. Melanie Kordsmeyer, 1895 Daniel Lane. Annie B. Page, 1895 Daniel Lane. Um, Jennifer Price, 15 Mary Ellen Drive. Jennifer Seibert, 1855 Ronald Road. And Nicole Ussery, 5 Mary Ellen Drive. And David and Donna Johnson. I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, at this time, I'm going to open the floor for public comments. If there are any. Please state your name and address for the record. Hello, my name is Thomas Hambeacon. I live at 1360 Stanley Rush Road. My property is about 500 feet away from the uh, property being rezoned. We talked about transitional zoning, and we've all read our books, and you know we understand how all that works. When we look at the map right now, he talks about Conway Corp. It is zoned A1. I mean, we don't want to assume that it's going to go commercial, it's going to do anything. It's 900 feet over to the I1 zoning, so it's quite a bit of land in between there. So when the property is completely surrounded by A1 and R1, you're creating an island. And in zoning rules, we try not to do that. As far as the other side of the road, the five, five point whatever acres, uh, that has 10 property owners that are R1 with houses on them. They're, they're not gonna change their zonings. Uh, over half the perimeter of the property is against these property owners that already have their houses established there. So that's a lot of property changing in the zones and everything. Uh, thank you for the history of trees. I did not know that trees were so important. <laughs> but uh, as far as the trees, we all understand that we have to cut down trees. I mean, it's a terrible thing. It has to be done. Uh, one of my main concerns was in the last clearing of the batch of trees, the uh, smoke from burning the piles went for a month. I mean, that was a month. We all love to go stand by a campfire. I love it. But what's the first thing you do when you get home? Throw those clothes in the washing machine. Uh, when the wind blows just right, that that's inundating people's houses. Uh, it's pretty hard to throw your house in the washing machine. Uh, I would like to, you know, possibly see something 
addressed to that issue. I know that's not y'all's, that's a different division of the state and everything, but that is a lot of acreage to be burning off, uh, you know, at one time. Uh, maybe possibly be an alternative thing for that. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Hambegan. Any other comments? <laughs> Please state your name and address for the record. Yeah, I'm David Johnson, 1604 South German Lane. My wife and I live at the very northwest corner of that same property that uh, Frank owns. Uh, we've lived there for 45 years. We lived there when that was a dirt road. I had to buy a four-wheel drive Jeep to get to my house. It's a lot different now. That was a big, huge field, uh, and it had uh, behind my house there the part that he's wanting to develop. It was a huge field. I used to quail hunt there, and it even had terraces. Uh, all those pine trees were planted in that section. That section he cleared uh, was all hardwood, or mostly hardwood. Um, I understand that, uh, you know, those trees were planted to be harvested. And I understand you have to clear some. My real problem with it is traffic. So far, in the last six years, my wife and I have had three cars totaled out in my driveway and two others heavily damaged, and my son-in-law had one totaled out right in front of my house. They drive down that road at 100 miles an hour twice a day when they get off work up, up the hill and at Verco. I can't, I haven't been able to get the city to do anything about it. But when we move uh, those multi-family units up there, that is just going to, It'll be horrible. I, I, I just hate that uh, we've had to lose this many cars. The last one had no insurance. It's, it's a total loss to us. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Buck Bean uh, with my wife, Cheryl, and we live at 1318 Stanley Rust Road. And uh, first thing I'd like to say is thank you for the, for the service you're doing our community. Uh, as we know, it's a, a fast growing community and has been for a long time. Um, I would also hearken back to something Mr. Shaw said, and I appreciate him stating that so eloquently. Uh, but with uh, we've we've lived at Stanley Russ now uh, for thir or, uh, ten years, and bought it from the original owner and builder who had been there for thirty years, um, and the the sewer treatment plant, um, I believe, and just looking at at the picture um, around that plant, the transition areas do kind of all look the same, and I think that that's done for a reason. Um, I agree with Mr. Hambeacon. Uh, the rezoning of the uh, land in question from um, it's A1 now to R1, and then you know the proposition to go to multifamily doesn't make a lot of sense when you think of those transitions and then also what's around it. Um, I've done a little reading, probably not near as much as you guys have uh, when it comes to planning. Um, however, um, it's my understanding that a barrier or something should be in place between the different zones. And here we would have the uh, multifamily uh, with, a, with no barrier right there to the, the R1 residential um, area as well. So in, in thinking of that and also the, the uh, unintended consequences of uh, multifamily housing, uh, including some of what was read, uh, increased noise, increased uh, traffic, inc uh, all those increases, um, I would uh, be in opposition of that rezoning. 
As far as the trees, um, I think the trees were planted there for a reason uh, to understand that we have to move trees to build things. Uh, but if you look at our city as a whole, um, there has to also be a point where we go, you know, this isn't a wise decision for an area. Uh, and we need to leave that there. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't think any of us, including uh, the developers, uh, like to do that because I do think it causes uh, different problems. And now you're introducing erosion and things like that that didn't exist for all those years while that was there. So I would ask the commission to take those uh, factors into consideration uh, and also uh, that zoning, does that make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, my name is Gary Alexander. I live at 1405 Appalachian Drive. I'm a newcomer to Conway. We moved here about five years ago from Florida. Um, the first thing I would like to know is, has there been a traffic study done? Because like these other gentlemen have said, the traffic on that road is horrendous. And I'm not, I'm not just stating that because it truly is. Um, I've seen growth firsthand. If, if any of y'all have ever been down to Destin, Florida, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. That was a very nice, peaceful place for people to come visit, little fishing community. Now, it's a nightmare to the people that live there. And, and I understand growth, you have to have growth, exactly, but it needs to be controlled. And I think once you start putting multifamily units here, there, you have Fountain Blue right now that's been setting there for like three years, trying to build that up. That's an apartment complex. That should be filled first. There's other apartment complexes being built. That should be built first. Then we should see how far Conway can actually grow. I mean, like I say, if I wouldn't have experienced it myself firsthand in the city of Destin, I probably wouldn't be standing here. But I have, I know what comes with growth, and especially when there's too much growth. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? My name's Carl Schroeder. I live at uh, 1525 Southern Hills Drive. <clears throat> and I just want to bring up a couple of things that I haven't heard. Uh, first, I want to thank the staff for their recommendation on the denial. The, uh, the trees, it's uh, a good thing to have, but they've already moved to the east side and they've already harvested a bunch of those trees, so I don't think that that's really going to be an issue. Since they're A1, they can cut them whenever they want to. The, the thing that I feel that uh, has been overlooked or hadn't been mentioned, is when you get multifamily, you get kids. And probably the closest place for those kids to go play or anything is probably a mile up to the boys' club. Uh, you know, there's not any other city parks around or city things around. So if you put kids right there, they're probably going to be across that fence around those sewer ponds. They're probably going to be over where the police shoot their guns all the time. I know that I don't know the exact location, but I always hear the firing range there. Uh, I just think that uh, you can put them there, but those kids are going to find things to do. So uh, I am against the rezoning to multifamily. Thank you. Good evening. My name's Rob Holden. Uh, I live at 1329 Stanley Russ Road. And as you can tell from my accent, I'm not from around here. <laughs> I'm a transplant from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But I have been here in the same house for 25 years. I'm a professor at UCA and I moved there because it was quiet. It was close to school. 
and it was a nice place to raise my kids. Um, I have not done a scientific study on traffic, but I can tell you what has happened over the last 25 years. When I moved to Stanley Russ Road 25 years ago, it was a dirt road. It was a dirt and gravel road. And they put in water, and that was a good thing. But um, when, I, when I moved, when, when I went back to Philadelphia to pick up my family and move them here permanently, they had somewhat paved the road. And uh, now they have paved it and widened it, and uh, it looks beautiful. But I will tell you that in the time that I have been there and the time that Verco came in um, and all of that, that the traffic has gotten from a few cars during the day to definite heavy traffic. And I just fear uh, that just as in other areas at the end of Salem Road and, and at the beginning of Richland Hills, where that area put up multifamily housing, apartment buildings, and so forth. And what that has done with the traffic there, I, I'm, I'm not excited about what may happen with the traffic flow patterns in that whole entire neighborhood if multifamily go up. I would like to see it stay residential one, maybe R2, but but no more than that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any remaining public comments? R2 is a uh, duplex residential district. In essence, it, it allows a single family and duplex development. So that's when we say duplex development, what that means uh, in contrast to, to multifamily one, multifamily one allows multifamily development. That means more than two units on a lot up to a certain density. Uh, what R2 allows is two units on one lot um, at, the, at the minimum lot size. So the minimum lot size being about 7,000 square feet. Yeah, yeah. R R two R two would be two units. Multifamily would be multiple multiples of units, so it'd be higher density. Multifamily one is a higher density zone. R two is a lower density zone. Lowest density would be R one. All right. Any other public comments? Good evening. My name is Barbara Kortzmeyer, and I live at 3 Mary Ellen Drive, and I kind of represent the families on Mary Ellen Drive, Daniel Lane, and uh, Ronald Road. And uh, traffic is a concern for us. We have several children. I have eight grandchildren that live, <laughs> live there, and there's five other children, in the, and people drive really fast on their road. Mary Ellen's kind of a cut through, so they can miss. So uh, we're concerned about the increased traffic. Uh, the multifamily is, um, it just doesn't really seem appropriate for the area. There are so many apartment complexes in our town that are not filled. I mean, I did a quick Google search today and I came up with about 500 apartments for rent. Um, so I, I don't know that we need that. We do need affordable housing. I, I, I kind of agree with that. So the residential seems like a nice fit. And I think that is kind of the consensus of, of my neighbors. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, I'm Phyllis Fry, and I live at 1215 Stanley Russ Road, and my family has been in that area since 1961. We have enjoyed having neighbors with us that we didn't have in 1961, and we love that, but we are opposed to the multifamily units out there. I literally have to watch three times before I cross the street to get my mail, as many of our neighbors do. The traffic comes so fast, they're not expecting people to be crossing the street there. And so it, it's very, very dangerous. And I would hate to think, well, I actually have a little 92-year-old grandmother, or mother, not grandmother, mother. And, of course, she can't do that. 
and so we get her mail for her. But um, it is very dangerous for the older people as well as the children who are out there. So please take that into consideration and think of it as a health and safety issue. Thank you. All right, are there any other public comments? All right, no other I'm going to invite Mr. Shaw back up. I like it in a minute, yes, sir. Um, and I'll address each individual that, and most of all of y'all are, are friends of mine, and I'm not here to cause problem, but let me just start with Tom, um, Tom Hambeacon. Um, burning the trees is a problem. Nobody could agree with you more than that. When they're burning trees on my property, I can't go. I have COPD, I can't go. There's no other way to get rid of it. I don't know what to do with it. We haul the stumps off, but we can't haul the trees off. Straw? It would burn them. If you could direct your comments towards okay. us, that'd be great. Okay, well, I, I just want to look at everybody so they'll know I'm talking to them. I agree with burning trees as a problem. I hate it. Any other alternative would be great. What we're doing, just a moment. What we're, what we're doing, um, as, Mr., as Mr. Johnson said, it was a field, and Bill Bell planted these trees. We're harvesting the trees. We're selling the trees, and the hardwoods bring more than the pine, but we have some big pine. We're not wasting the trees. There's a lumber shortage. We're selling trees. These trees were planted to be harvested. And I might add that there's no city ordinance that keeps anybody from cutting their own tree. It's not possible. If you, if you deny every request I've got, I can still go cut my timber and sell it. So I'm not being harsh about that because we're going to leave all the trees we can on Round Mountain, but these, because of the lot size and affordable housing, they have to be cut. And so I just want you to understand, we don't want to do that, but we're not wasting them. What we're burning is the stumps and the, and the stuff that we can't harvest at the lumber yards and we'll come and get. You know, we have trucks in and out, and we have skid haulers, and we're pulling them, and we're going to do a lot more because these trees were planted to be harvested. Now, if they were on the side of the hill, like, like below... Uh, Buck and Cheryl's house uh, on the side of the ridge, you're probably not going to harvest those because one is you can see over them. You know, no, a view lot is no good if you have no view. See, you need to be able to see, so you got to cut some trees to do that. In our case, it's not a view issue. So um, I wanted to address that with Mr. Hambeacon and Mr. Johnson and, and Buck and Cheryl and uh, Mr. Alexander. Um, you know, I, I wish, I'm glad we're not a Destin, but I'm also glad we're not, and I'm going to say it, a West Memphis or an East Arkansas town that's shriveling up and dying. So you're either growing or you're slowing, and you're either getting bigger or you're going stagnant. And when I was a kid, and I lived here all my life, every day of it, Conway, Russellville, and Marlton were all the same size. I know that because we played in the same football conference. And Russellville's grown some, and my friends in Marlton haven't experienced any growth. So we can be this way and be growth and growing, Several of the people that are spoke have just moved here. I, that's great. That's great. But there are other people who are wanting to move here who need affordable housing. And they want to live next to Ellen Smith. It's only a mile to the school. So I, I know Mr. Uh, Carl, Mr. Schroeder, taught in Southern Hills, and I believe it was just as wooded as this, but I, wouldn't, I can't say that. I think the city owns most of the property from Favre, um, a lot of the property, Conway Court property, from Favre or Acuff up to Dave Ward. I've heard the splash pad being discussed for this area. Anybody heard that? Yeah, everybody's heard that. There, it's, it's a potential location. I don't know if it's going to go or not. It's brought up to me. There's also a firing range there already that the city uses, the fire department uses for training. It is on the north side of the Conway Court property. If you look at the map, you see the yellow line which is what we're talking about tonight, on the uh, east side of our property. It backs up to the Conway Corp. You see the tanks, you see the sewer ponds, formerly, and then you see the Verco really big buildings. Now, I want to ask you in self sincerity, what is the transition from Verco? It may be zoned A1, but Conway Corp. is where they do their work. Their trucks stay there. They have people working there. It's a commercial area. Regardless of how it's zoned, talk to them about that. Where, what is the transition between heavy industrial and Southern Hills and Appalachian? Well, it's the woods. And it's going to be what we build there. And R2 is appropriate for that area. 
So I'm amending all of my MF1s to a, to a more strict designation, and perhaps that will help people understand. Uh, James will tell you that we've talked about this before today, and I had to run it by um, the engineers who are planning this for the uh, gentleman who's going to build these units, and we got approval late this afternoon, and we know we can amend it here, so we're off the MF1, and it will be um, R2. And I, I think I said that about the parcel um, in the center, I guess we'll call it, behind the houses on ACA. But I meant to say it about the entire, both parcels, okay? The MF is not uh, a zoning we're looking for. We're looking for R2. And I had to get that permission. As I said, my guy's on vacation. It's hard to find everybody. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Holden, I know you've lived there for 25 years, and I know that was a dirt road, and the city has improved it. The county's improved a lot of roads. I wonder why they improved it. They improved it and made it such a nice, beautiful street because there's a lot of traffic there, and there's expected to be more. Now, I didn't do this. Somebody built the Baker Wills Expressway and that exit. We all like it. I use it. Sometimes I use it to go to West Conway because it's quicker, and I don't like driving down Dave Ward. So the Salem Road exit and the Baker Wills Expressway exit have both relieved traffic on Dave Ward, which was getting unreasonable. So the fact that a lot of people are using Bill Bell, that was the plan, to get traffic off Dave Ward, get it south of town on the Baker Wills Expressway. Now, I didn't build that. And I didn't cause the traffic. And so far, not one car that's ever been down that road and wrecked in anybody's yard has come from anything I've built there. Nothing. Not one. If there's traffic problems, that's a police problem. Everybody knows that. I mean, I can't fix that. So I respect your opinions, and I respect the fact that you don't want that development near you, but it's like everything else. You want people to come to town. If you're in the business per world like I've been and Many of my friends here have been. You want more business. You want steady business. But you don't want them to live next to you. You want them to live somewhere else across town in somebody else's field. That's just how it is. It's great, but not in my backyard. I faced the same thing when we were trying to get mental health treatment facilities in Conway. I, I did that zoning. And everybody was for it, except the people that live near it. And that's just what we have here. It's the same thing. Um, and and Miss Cordsmeyer, I you know I've known you forever, and I appreciate that. But you know the tech park was built next door to y'all. The city built the tech park up on the hill. They built it there so there would be commercial growth and business growth there. And Hewlett Packard built, and they're not as big as they used to be. But all of that was built to put traffic on Stanley Russ Road and the Baker Wills Expressway, perhaps. So if you go down Sturgis, which is, I think someone said 900 feet. All you have between my yellow lines and Verco and Sturgis and the Tech Park, which is just around the corner, is a Conway Corp plant or ground. Now, whether it's the city or the Conway Corp, that's an argument for another day. I don't know which one owns it, but it's quasi-public-private. It's zoned agricultural. I don't see any cotton growing there. It's a, it's a sewer plant, for goodness sakes. So, Miss Fry, I know you've lived up there forever, and you have a beautiful place, and I know Buck and Cheryl have a beautiful place, and they've impro improved y'all's road so much that it's really a pleasure to drive, and I drive that way every day. I go down Stanley Russ, I turn on Wasson, and I go to Round Mountain to the subdivisions we're working on down there. It's a beautiful drive. But I don't think any of the people that are going to be living in what we call Bell Valley are going to be going up that hill unless they're going to see friends. Will they go down Bill Bell Lane to Baker Wills Expressway? Absolutely. Will they go north to Dave Ward? Sure. Will they go down far to take their children to elementary school? I hope so. That's why a lot of people move to Conway. They want to be in our school district. This is about a mile from a really good, nearly new elementary school. So I would ask you, just don't deprive people of living in West Conway just because they can't afford a $100,000 or a $300,000 lot or half a million dollar home. It's fair to put people of different income groups in different parts of town. This is what we're trying to do here. 
And I think that's some of the opposition. I honestly do. So I've addressed the issue on the trees being planted and harvested. I've about addressed the transitional zoning. I, I think R2 is great for there. I've amended it to R2 by my words here tonight. And I think the burning stuff is just awful. I wish we could do something else with it, but I don't think the landfill takes it. So we burn them and 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 rake them and burn them and we breathe the smoke and we hate it. We don't like it. I'm looking for an answer there, but I don't find one in the city codes that help me any. So really the duty of the planning commission and the city council is to determine what is the highest and best use for this property. And I would suggest to you that backing up to what was a sewer plant, and you can see the ponds up there, and you can see the tanks, you can see all of that. And Verco, 900 feet away. Actually, Verco is probably closer to this property than most of the people who spoke against it. So I would suggest to you that putting R2 zone in the area south of ACOV, and I'll tell you what else I'll do. Let me just tell you this. Let's see if this helps it. I'll, I'll amend my zoning east of Bill Bell to R1. Right here, right now, just did it. That's the one that butts up to the sewer plant. I'm going to ask people to live in single-family home backing up to an abandoned sewer plant. But I'm going to do that because a lot of these people, most all of them are my friends. I know everybody here. I'm not mad about it, but... Gee whiz, what do you expect if you want it to be a part by it? Mr. Shaw, can you yes. just clarify for us? Is that the 8.69 yes. acre portion? 8.69 portion. I'll re, I will move now to rezone it to R1. So just to clarify, Mr. Shaw, just for all of us that are up here, that you are essentially clarifying your request to be in accordance with what the staff recommended? Exactly. Okay, thank you. Well said, thank you. Exactly what the staff said, that's what I'm for. And the people that have come have swayed me on their opinions. And I agree with some people, and I love everybody. And I disagree with some people, and I love them too. But I'm, I'm stuck on the burning stumps. That's the one thing I don't like either. I wish we had another alternative. We don't like it, and I don't have a choice. But we're harvesting trees that were planted to be harvested. We have every right to cut every tree, whether we develop it or not. That's the truth. Uh, just like everybody here has a right to cut the trees in their yard. And we're going to have to cut the trees. We're going to harvest them. That was part of the purchase price. We paid for it. We paid for the timber. And that's what's going to happen. Now, there is an area that we own. Let me just tell everybody now so you'll know. On Between Stanley Russ and where it goes down the hill, well, actually between Daniel Lane for uh, Sherry. Sherry wrote a letter and Fletch. But between Daniel Lane and Stanley Russ, there's about an acre and a half in there of heavily wooded area. It's a little triangular piece that I also own that piece right in front of their house and the King's house. And then south of, well, I'm sorry, north of Stanley Russ Road, but south of the yellowed area that's kind of a L shape. We also own all of that land there, and there are no plans for it at this time except to leave it heavily wooded, okay? So coming off the hill, we'll have plenty of trees. In front of the Kings and Fletcher Smith home, there'll be plenty of trees. We can cut all of those, but we don't have any desire to cut those. If you see what I'm talking about, right where it says Daniel Lane on that map, um, if you came straight down the Conway Corpse western boundary and came straight down to Daniel Lane, there's a small portion in there. It's about two acres that is also included in this parcel that I bought from Mr. Bell and his family. And then south of the yellow L-shaped area, that's the southern part, all the way up to the corner of Stanley Russ, Bill Bell Lane. That's also our property, but we're not seeking to rezone any of that at this time. And it will remain um, tree covered, as will the piece, the portion above Daniel Lane. So there's also another portion that we need to address, and that is east of, this, this land's cut up with a lot of streets, east of Bill Bell, there's a little triangular portion that comes out where the Conway Corporation brings their pole trucks out onto Stanley Russ Road. Now, these are trucks, long trucks, work trucks. There's a triangular piece in there that's 1.69 acres. 
It is to the east of Bill Bell and the south of the large eight acre tract. I have no plans to develop it at this time um, and it is heavily tree covered as well. So we're not cutting all the trees, we're just cutting the ones that are necessary for development. And I want everybody to know, I'm sorry I have to do that. And I'm sorry it's upset you and I don't wanna do it, but we have to do it to develop the land. And so would anybody else, it's not just me. It just has to be. Thank you. When you say that property, because that's where my house is, when you come up that hill, so it's next to Elwood and Tur or Turk and Mary Alice's house. When you say not now, will that not be rezoning this this discussion now since it's part of that property to already be R2 if that is what is decided, or is it completely separate? Are you mad? I'm talking about the land across from where you're developing now that's you cleared. I'm not, the trees are not an issue in this discussion at all. It's just across the street where it goes up to the Smith's property, which is the old road that used to go up there. Yes, the old abandoned road. Yes. yes. Okay, we own, own, I think the city's abandoned that, and my map shows that I own to the middle of it, and- um, The Smith's own to the, to the middle of it. And they own to the middle of it, and it's not possible to reopen it. Okay, that's my question. That's so is that question. not in, that is not in this discussion at all? I can, okay, I wanna be clear on that's it. That's a fair question. Okay, thank you. Can it be rezoned yet? Yes, it well is zoned, if I may speak. It's not, it, it would not be rezoned tonight. The the only land under question is is this. Similarly, if if there were a rezoning request that was brought in the future, uh, essentially it would go through the same process of providing public notice. There would be a public hearing uh, at a at a planning commission meeting very similar to this, and then you all would have a an opportunity to submit comments or to, to come in person and, and submit comments as well. The, the, the property, the Elton property, what is the current zoning on that? Is that R2 or R1? It's A1 now. We're moving for R2 tonight. Uh, R2. No, you, you mentioned R1 for that one. The 8.69? Yes, 8.69 is R1. One, okay. Correct. The one on top, the one that's below. Yes, that's correct. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little hard to tell. This is A1, uh, this is A1 here as well. This is R1, that's R1 at this point. And so he's saying he's going to make the bottom piece R1 here, R2 there. Okay, right. What we if I may speak, what we're, what we're, uh, requesting there is R2. It's my understanding that all those houses on the top are rental properties now. Yes. Yes, they Is that are. correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. So we're asking to put rental properties next to them. Yes. Yeah, but they're all single family homes. Right. So if, if I could if I could just impress upon you how nice these duplexes will be in there, they're two story and they'll be very appropriate. Well, no, I, okay, can we bring yeah, this I back think, into yeah, I think we're at okay. the end of our public comment? We're at the end of the public comment section. Oh, can, can I just one question, please? Because no, everything because be it was nice enough to to rezone um, the eastern part there, the eight point six nine acres, and I was just kind of hoping he would feel the same way with the five point four nine. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, so that ends our public comment section. Um, is there a com final comments by staff, Levi? Do you have anything you want to clarify or need to clarify? Only if you have any questions. Okay, so now this is officially back in committee. We want to thank everybody for your time tonight and for your comments. We appreciate you guys giving up and also sending emails. So thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, uh, are there any questions or comments from staff regarding this? From committee wise. So once, once we go to the R1 for the 8.69, is that the final? call on that like it or can it be can it come back again just the the um the applicant is requesting to amend his application okay. in essence um you know that doesn't prevent any other future 
rezoning request. Okay. Since Mr. Shaw has, these are two separate pieces of property, and now he's requesting two separate zonings, does it make sense to have two separate applications to discuss since they're both different zones? Does it just cause a lot of confusion for the public, and he's amended them twice in here? I mean, the R1 makes sense. That's what is kind of around there, but there's, even with R2, I think there's questions and concerns about that zoning. I, the the general practice when we we approach something like this is to allow an amendment to an application if it's less intense than what's been requested uh, but we do not allow it if it's more intense so generally speaking in every every case we would allow someone to amend their application to be less to a zone that is less intense than what they've initially proposed to, to Laura's question though maybe this could um, possibly be a solution from a procedural standpoint, could we take them as separate motions? Oh, I, uh, sure. Okay, just I thought that might be a helpful too. Well, I submitted it in one application. I mean, I submitted it in one application, one motion. So from a legal standpoint, I just wanted to know if you're going to submit it, I'll go back and do something different. I mean, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to accommodate this. I don't want to have my vote spread and get one and get not get the other. So if my buyer's not going to enter this, it's all or nothing for me. So I want you to understand, I'm going to go back and run them more than you when you have your vote. I mean, I don't care if I have to do it. So we, we're told that the city can uh, release some of the areas so that we won't have to rely on them. And I will explain that to them when they get here. I do. I, I want to make it very clear that the city is having trouble making this work. And it's not just us. So, so it's kind of a comp complicated question depending on street layout. So one of the big differences in a multifamily zoning and the R2 zoning is, uh, as James pointed out earlier, with R2 you're allowed up to two units per lot. Um, but they are still, so that requires you to subdivide into 6,000 square feet lots for each one of those two units. Multifamily does not require that. It doesn't require public streets. It doesn't require these units front on public streets. So with the multifamily zoning, uh, you could you can be up to 12 units per acre. Uh, with the R2 zoning, it's just heavily dependent on the street layout and how that lot layout is configured. But in general, you're looking at 6,000 square foot lot minimums. Uh, so that'd be two lots for every every six thousand or two units for every six thousand square feet. That's not including any property taken out for roads. Sure. Any request to duplex it to about seven thousand square feet, and not six single family six, but then duplex it to seven thousand square foot minimum, a little larger. You actually get larger lots if you duplex it in an R1. I uh, believe you may be speaking of the R2A, but we can go back and look. But I'm not sure. I'll check you. Yeah. It, it, leave it. It is, it is, it's 3,500 per, per family. Got it. That'd be 7,000 per lot. Uh, yes. So specifically, Ann, you're asking about which property? On the five acre or the eight acre? Are they two-story or single level? So without streets being taken into account, which we can't really estimate, it'd be 72 units roughly in there. Levi, are they two-story or single level? Uh, that would be to the discretion of the, the builder. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sure. So in early meetings with the applicant about potentially rezoning this property, uh, staff did discuss different physical constraints, one of those being the topography on that, that five acre portion of property. Uh, so with that, uh, just making it a little bit more economically feasible for development, uh, staff did uh, see the uh, potential benefit and in, in increased density uh, kind of for the clustering of those units. So maybe preservation of some trees and, and just a little bit less road requirements for to accommodate those units. Uh, the larger piece of property, the eight, eight acre piece of property, uh, as I noted earlier, is relatively flat. There's really no physical constraint to that property. So we didn't really see that need to, to increase density. Commission, I, in in deference to fairness to the to the applicant, I think this should be handled as as one motion on one item. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. I appreciate that. I th I think my challenge, just talking in the commission, what I struggle with is, um, I think certainly appreciate Mr. Shaw, um, amending his um application, um, especially because it's in line with the staff recommendations, which I think is really important. I think my challenge is that, um, you know, my struggle is that we haven't really allowed for public comment for that. And so that's just something that, you know, and, and I, I'm not, not saying that we should tonight. I'm just saying it hasn't gone through, um, you know, if this is your, if you're attending tonight and you were in opposition, I don't know that we've got a good representation of how the community might feel. So I think that's just my struggle that I'm trying to get to a place because I appreciate that it does meet the staff recommendations. So just for planning commission discussion. For me, that it does meet the staff recommendation helps, especially considering many of them don't want anything there in general. If they just want trees, I can't tell him to leave his land there and dump it on his land, right? We can ask him to fall in line with what staff recommends. And if Conway is growing, it's growing. If you, ha if you, I can't ask him not to develop his land. I can leave it there. And so if he's going to get closer to what staff recommends, for me, that does it. That gets me closer to a yes because a multifamily, I get it. I get the uh, chaos it may bring. I get all of that. And so I can understand the trepidation to voting for that. That he amended both one to R1 and one to R2 is a, um, is a give when it's his land. If he wanted to, like, if he, they're his trees, he could cut them all down and do whatever, and not a word we could say here will stop any of that. And so I can't say leave your land, leave the trees there, and don't build on your land and any of that because I didn't buy the land. I, I can agree with that. Yeah. Traffic is not our domain, and so I have a hard time saying don't build because of traffic because the city will fix the traffic. 
if it needs to be fixed. We can't, if we always deny based on traffic, there are several things we will not build. Raising canes would not be there, would not be there. My daughter would not be happy. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. And so I think that if we let traffic be the driver of what we approve, then we deny a lot of stuff. And that becomes a city issue, not a planning commission issue. So at multifamily one, it was estimated that it would be 1,200 vehicle trips per day. So with R1 and R2, it's going to be substantially less traffic. Mm -hmm. Can you do a quick, is it that easy? <laughs> Can you do some quick it's, math for us, Levi? It's a little bit. It's not uh, that easy? <laughs> no, yeah, we, okay. we use land use codes and it's based up, uh, but it, but you're right, it would be significantly less. <laughs> just thought you might could yeah. whip that up in the algorithm. <laughs> no, I know what that was. I just thought maybe Levi could whip out a number for us. Well, I have to divide it by two, and, and then half of it. Is there a place in here for me to make one comment about the staff recommendation? No. Okay. Okay, can we, are we ready for a vote? I made first. What? I make a motion that we grant the applicant uh, a rezoning request of R2 and R1, R1 being the 8.769 acres, and the R2 is the 5.49 acres. Um, there weren't any. Mm. A second. Um, I'm voting no, but just for the simple fact that there hasn't, folks can hear tonight to talk about A1 to MS1, and while it's lessive, we haven't heard any public comment on. It, it is a majority of the quorum. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, so there's, there's seven. Yes, yes. So we have it's four, five. It's four votes out of seven? It's four out of seven. What are, what are the bylaws? Oh. I'll vote, but if it won't give us six, if we need six, it, it won't matter. No, it's no, it's okay. By a vote of four to two, the motion passes. Okay, and four to four, the rezoning for yeah. Four, so the eight point six nine will be rezoned to R one, and the five point will, will go to R one. R two, R one will yeah. So it leads to the council, right? Make that city council. Or yes. So this item will go before the uh, city council meeting uh, next Tuesday. And to and to clarify again, the western portion that is south of Acuff th that was voted to be rezoned to R two. The eastern portion, uh, east of Bill Bell Lane, that was the portion that was voted to go to R one. And again, the the city council meeting uh, is Tuesday night at six o'clock. Uh, yes, excuse me, Tuesday a week from now. Yeah, sorry, I've already got my days passed. Okay. Um, are there any, are there any other items we need to discuss? Move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs>